Lord be with you. Welcome to our all in service at the beginning of September. It's great to see you and to welcome you to our service today. We're going to start as we always do with our welcoming words. So when I uh, say a line, you're going to say, we welcome you back. Uh, to everyone, we welcome you uh, is what we're saying, just to encourage one another and to remember that even though we might be in different places, we worship together as the people of God. So, young and old, we welcome you. Happy and sad, we welcome you. Regular and visitor, we welcome you. Quiet and noisy, we welcome you. In our homes and on our screens, we welcome you. It's great for us to be together today to think a little bit about God's Word, His Bible, uh, and to reflect on what it might mean for us today. I'm going to start off by reading you a story. I'm reading it from a child's Bible, uh, and it's a story called Flies, Boils and Locusts. When Moses grew up to be a man, God spoke to him from a burning bush in the desert. Go to the king of Egypt, said God. Tell him to let my people go. Moses was afraid. He didn't want to go to the king, so God told him to take his brother Aaron with him to help. Moses went with Aaron to give the king God's message, but the king was angry. He wouldn't let the people go. Instead, he told the slave drivers to make them work even harder. So God sent ten terrible plagues on the people of Egypt. First the river Nile turned as red as blood. Then there were frogs everywhere. There were frogs in the houses, the food and the beds. The air was full of gnats itching and biting, then buzzing flies. All the horses, donkeys, camels and cattle, sheep and goats became ill and died. Then the people were covered with nasty black boils so they couldn't stand up. And there was a terrible hailstorm that destroyed all the new crops and stripped the leaves from the trees. Locusts came later and ate everything and everything that was still left. Then the land was still and covered in complete darkness for three days. God kept his people safe during this time. And when each plague happened, the king of Egypt agreed to let God's people go. But as soon as the plague was over, the king changed his mind. Finally, the tenth and most terrible of all the plagues came on the people of Egypt. God told Moses to get the people ready to leave. They put a special sign on their doors and ate a final meal of roast lamb with herbs, with their bags packed and their cloaks and shoes on. That night, every firstborn male, animal and every firstborn son in Egypt died including the king's son. The king of Egypt sent for Moses. Take God's people and go, he shouted. That's the story of God's people, the Hebrews, being released from Egypt, where they had been trapped uh, for lots and lots of years. And it's a story which is sometimes a bit difficult to understand. But I want us to think just about that last plague a little bit more this week. It's what we've been doing uh, in our service uh, for the grown-ups this week uh, as we've thought about what's called the Passover. In the Passover, to avoid that final plague, God told his people to take a lamb, uh, to kill it and to put the blood on the doorposts like we heard in the story. And it's a bit of a strange and difficult story to understand. So I am going to tell you a special extra bonus story this week to help us understand it a little bit more. It's a story that I have told before and it's from my great big storybook. So let's turn to that now and listen to the story of the Luma Laws. Have you ever heard of the planet Luma? It is a beautiful place by a wonderful place, a peaceful place. The whole planet is ruled over by the high satrap of the stars. He is the gentle ruler who has overseen the planet for as long as anyone can remember. But nobody has seen him for years. It's rumoured that he lives in the pinnacled palace of Pim Azur. One of the reasons that the planet Luma is such a peaceful place is that there are strict laws called the Luma Laws. 
If you break any of the Luma laws, you get arrested by the judicial guards and taken away to the great jail of Clinkator to help people who might know what they can, can and can't do. Signs warn people when they might run the risk of breaking one of the Luma laws. Our story today is all about one inhabitant of Luma whose name is Milton. One Tuesday, Milton was feeling a bit bored. Not much was happening, so he decided to go to the market. Now at the market there's a law that everyone has to queue up and wait their turn to come to the front and buy what they want. There's a big sign which reminds people of the Luma law. One customer at once, please wait your turn. Milton decided he didn't want to wait. So even though there was a great big queue, he pushed to the front. Well, the other customers didn't know what to do. They just stood and stared at Milton as he pushed them out of the way and went straight to the front of the queue. That wasn't the right thing to do at all. Milton had broken the Luma law. After he'd bought the things he wanted from the market, Milton went to the cafe for his lunch. Now, food on Luma is free for everyone to enjoy, so you don't have to pay for what you eat. But there are Luma laws to say what everyone can have. Milton read the sign on the wall. Luma law. One cake per person. Milton was feeling hungry. He decided to have three cakes. Well, that wasn't the right thing to do at all. Milton had broken the Luma law. After lunch, Milton decided he would go to the park. To get there, he would take the train. By now, Milton was feeling like nothing could stop him. So rather than buy a ticket, he decided he would just sneak on. He walked straight past the sign that said, Luma law, every passenger must have a ticket. Milton walked down to the platform and hopped straight on the train. That wasn't the right thing to do at all. Milton had broken the Luma law. The doors closed and the journey began. Tickets please, rang out the voice of the ticket inspector. Milton suddenly realised what he'd done. He didn't have a ticket. He'd chosen not to buy one. The ticket inspector moved closer. Milton didn't know what to do. Should he run away? Well, he couldn't. He was stuck on the train. Ticket, please, asked the inspector. I don't have one, said a very nervous Milton. No ticket? But you have to have one. It's a Luma law. I don't have one, Milton repeated. OK, I'm afraid you're going to have to come with me, said the ticket inspector firmly. At the next station, the train was met by two burly members of the Judicial Guard. They escorted Milton from the train station to the pinnacled palace of Pim Azur, the home of the High Satrap of the Stars. This was getting serious. They took Milton into the courtroom, where high up on a bench sat the Luma Judge. As he looked round, Milton could see all of the court officials and what looked like another prisoner. There was a man surrounded by a long, long chain. The links of it went all the way around him several times. It looked so heavy that Milton didn't think he'd be able to move. Milton wondered how many Luma laws he had broken to get such a big chain. The judge scowled as he looked down. Milton, the judge began, you stand accused of breaking the Luma law. Our investigation shows you have broken three Luma laws. You were impatient and you pushed in at the market. You took cakes from the cafe and you rode the train without a ticket. Did you choose to do the wrong thing and break these three Luma laws? I did, said a very sorry Milton. When the Luma law is broken, the judge went on, it is customary for the punishment to be handed out in the presence of the High Satrap of the Stars. Milton looked around. He couldn't see the High Satrap anywhere. The man with the long chain stood up. I am here, Judge. You may pass your judgment now. Milton couldn't believe it. That is the High Satrap. Why does he have a big chain? The judge began talking again. For breaking three Luma laws, 
you are sentenced to three years in prison. You will be taken here to the jail at Clinkator. Guards, prepare the prisoner. The high satrap looked at Milton. Judge, that won't be necessary. I will stand in Milton's place. I will take his punishment. Add his sentence to my chain and set Milton free. As you command, High Satrap, said the judge. Release the prisoner and add three more years to the High Satrap's sentence. I don't understand, said Milton. What just happened? The High Satrap turned to Milton and looked him in the eye. He smiled. Milton, even though you broke the law, I will take the punishment that should be yours. You will go free. I live in the jail, in the basement of the Pinnacled Palace. Everyone who breaks a Luma law is brought here, and even though they chose to do the wrong thing, I choose to do the right thing for them. I take their punishment. For every year I must spend in jail, we add a link to this chain. It represents all of the, thing, all of the people of Luma who have done wrong. I will spend the rest of my life in the jail. But I do it so that the people of Luma can be free, so that they can live in peace. All I ask of you, Milton, is that you go from this place and follow the Luma law for the rest of your life. Do you think you can do that? I can, Milton said. But can I ask why you do it? Because I love the people of Luma, Milton. I love you, and I want you to be free. Hi, Satrap, thank you for everything, said a very, very grateful Milton. He stood up and walked back out of the palace, back out into Luma. He was free, and he chose to do what the High Satrap had asked, and he followed the Luma law for the rest of his life. So that is the story of Milton and the Luma laws. And it's like that story we heard from the Bible about Passover and about God's people being set free from Egypt. When God set his people free from Egypt, a young lamb was killed in every house so that the people could go free. Just like in our story, where the high satrap of the stars takes on Milton's punishment so that Milton and all of the people of Luma can be free. And that's what God does for you and for me. Through Jesus, God takes the punishment for the things that we all do wrong onto himself as Jesus dies on the cross. And because of that, all of us can live and be free. God loves us and wants the best for each one of us. And at the start of a new term, it's great to be reminded that God's love for us is so big. So let's say a prayer. Father God, we thank you that you love each one of us. We thank you that at the start of this new school year, you will be with us wherever we go, whatever it is that we are doing. And we thank you, Lord, that you love us, that your love for us is bigger and wider and deeper than any of us can know or imagine. So, Lord Jesus, help us to live in the freedom of your love, to know that you are with us wherever we go and help us to build your kingdom of love, peace and kindness wherever we go. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we've reached the end of our service for today. So we're going to use our sending words as we get ready to go out. And you might want to use these special sending words as a prayer for you as you go into your schools this week. And whatever it is you're doing, you need to know that God loves you and goes with you. 
So the reply to some of the things I'm saying is God sends us out. God gives us the talents and gifts to shine like stars in the world. In the power of the Holy Spirit, God sends us out. In our homes, at work and at rest, God sends us out. To those with plenty and those in need, God sends us out. In Barrow and beyond, God sends us out. To build God's kingdom and show God's love, God sends us out. To bring back stories of all that God has done, God sends us out. Going to sing a song to finish today, uh, and it's a song to remind us just how big God is. It's bigger than big. Father 